Hi, once again, we are back. We are back for the second conference today and the last one of the day. We have here today with us Katia Kolmetz. She's founder of WaveMakers, dedicated to empower leaders to reach their full potential while staying true to their roots and identity. Before embarking on her entrepreneurial path, she played a key role in building SAP Startup Incubator and lead EMEA Tech Communications at Philips. With a background in international communication management, she frequently delivers lectures at universities and has been recognized as a finalist for the Digital Female Leader Award 2021 and the Tech Awards Gala 2022. Hello, Katia. Thank you very much for being here today with us. So it's all yours. Whenever you want, you can start. Hi, Noelia, and hi, everyone on the line who is watching and listening. Thanks so much for the warm welcome. And uh, I know this is the final session of the day uh, just before your weekend is starting or the real work of the hackathon is starting. Uh, but I'm very excited that you decided to listen to my story and um, hear a bit about the ups and downs of my entrepreneurial journey. So I will share with you today a bit of my journey from imposter, or let's say, imposter to startup CEO of uh, Wavemakers and also how I discovered my own leadership potential. This session is especially for you if you would like to build a business or a product but you don't feel 100% qualified or ready yet. But it is also for you if you're not an entrepreneur, no worries. Um, but if you're in that situation that you're applying for jobs or looking for jobs, maybe you have this shiny CV, but like when you get invited to the interviews, you start doubting yourself a little and sometimes even feel like a fraud. In that case, your session, the session today will also be for you. Or if you just want to position yourself for new opportunities, network and shine, but sometimes you're still hesitant a little bit to put yourself too much out there or be in the spotlight, um, then I hope you'll also have a couple of valuable takeaways from today's session. So a bit of an intro, building on what Naelia already said. My name is Katja. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur based in uh, Berlin. I have uh, 10 years of corporate work experience, but then I actually changed my career a couple of years ago. And uh, at the moment, for two and a half years, I'm the founder and CEO of Wavemakers that I will also talk a little bit about later. I'm often asked to speak about either leadership, entrepreneurship or diversity, but also this deeply uncomfortable topic, imposter syndrome. And there are not many people who like to talk about imposter syndrome, especially not in public, and especially not when it comes to their very own personal imposter syndrome. But I'm gonna try to uh, crush that uh, taboo a little bit today and uh, shine some light on imposter syndrome and also my own one. But first let's start with what does it actually mean? What does imposter syndrome stand for? It basically means that you are doubting your abilities, your skills, your talents, your accomplishments, and sometimes you feel like a fraud because of that. So in a way that people could find out that you are actually not that good, not that qualified, or not yet ready yet for that next step. And there are so many people that experience imposter syndrome. So uh, researchers say that it's 70% or even more than that, that do experience signs and symptoms of imposterism. But again, how do we know if nobody talks about it or if nobody admits it, right? It basically means, imagine you're in a meeting room and there are nine other people. So chances are, if you feel like an imposter, there are six other individuals in the very same room at the same time that also feel like imposters. Here are a few examples of why people might feel uh, or experience the imposter syndrome. Maybe because they never finished university. Maybe they have panic attacks in meetings or social anxiety. Maybe sometimes shying away from applying to jobs because they don't meet all the single requirements that are on the employer's lists. Constantly seeking out trainings or certifications to get that external validation that you're actually good enough 
or also shuddering when some, someone says that they're an expert. Maybe you also know that feeling. And it can look like this. The most successful people that have all the accomplishments and their careers are going well, still feel like imposters. And for me, it was like really, really often like that, that I actually managed to accomplish important milestones and I was able to celebrate successes. But instead of really celebrating them, I looked into the mirror and all I would see was an imposter. So someone who had messy thoughts, uh, didn't get all the things done that she wanted to get done, or also felt insecure about her next steps. This is something that many people experience, many women, maybe many people um, that are from minorities or have less role models, but virtually everyone can experience imposter syndrome at some point in their lives and careers. And for me, it looked like this. I um, initially started my career in Hong Kong and then progressed through different steps uh, throughout the years. I'm originally from Germany, but then I applied at some point for a training program, a professional training in Hong Kong. I was 19 years old, and that's the first moment that I remember that I experienced imposter syndrome. So what happened there? I received this email the acceptance letter that I was selected into the training program. And I literally thought they made a mistake. There is no way that these amazing companies would choose me to be their trainee because I was young. I didn't even go to university yet. My only work experience was a two week internship at the local photographer. I didn't even have amazing grades in school. So what on earth happened that they would select me? And these questions are exact example of what imposter syndrome is all about. But I moved on. So I completed the traineeship. Everything worked well. At some point, I decided to go back to Europe, right? So I moved to the Netherlands and I started studying there. And again, I felt like an imposter. This time, I didn't feel like an imposter because I had no work experience. I did. I just completed a professional training. Now I felt like an imposter because I was too experienced. Everyone else in university was younger than me. I was the one that had a business degree at that point already. Everyone was always looking at me for answers. And suddenly, I felt like I was pretending to be a student and kind of in the wrong place. So again an example of imposter syndrome for all the stupid reasons in the world. Another one was when I founded my first startup, you see it here in 2013. Um, I was still a student back then and um, I created a language learning initiative and uh, that was part of a course called Entrepreneurship and Innovation. So we filled this business model canvas, maybe some of you know it, maybe some of you are working on it at the moment even. And in the business model canvas, I shaped the idea for this language learning business and what it would look like. And then when I completed the course, I thought, hey, this is something that I don't want to throw away into the garbage now. It was not just for the grade. I actually want to make it happen. So because the teachers always told us, you know, you have to experiment, you have to validate if you're onto a good idea. I started doing exactly that. So I started building a team of supporters. I started marketing the initiative and I actually made some noise around it. it was quite successful, but I had not even registered the company yet, right? I was just testing the market. So the question is, does that make me an imposter? And I still don't really have an answer for that, but I can tell you that I did feel like an imposter for sure. And many entrepreneurs do because we're always building something that does not exist yet. Another example of imposter syndrome, 2014, when I started my first job in a big global corporation. So I started working in the IT department of Philips and I was responsible for internal communications. I was even hired as the internal communications lead. In this IT team, there were hundreds of employees, but I think there were less than 20 women in the entire team. So I felt a little bit like an outsider, especially because most of the other women were experienced professionals, but they were assistants, assistants to the male executives. 
And I was the only woman that was super young, even from a non-technical background, and was hired as internal communications lead. So often I felt like it was really hard to get taken seriously in meetings. I was often underestimated. I even received quite a lot of sexist comments. And it was definitely not easy to find my way. More often than not, I entered the meeting and I felt like I didn't belong there and that everyone would, else would be smarter than me. So again, total imposter syndrome. Now, I won't go through all the single steps in my career where I did feel like an imposter. And I can also proudly tell you that it got less over the years. So with every year and every experience, I actually managed to build more confidence and take active steps in overcoming imposter syndrome. But it's still not entirely gone yet. And I have an example for you that is actually really, really recent. Um, when I founded, officially founded the Wavemakers company, I went to the notary's office and I was asked to fill a form and to officially create the business together. And now you can ignore the German. I know that most of you don't speak or understand German. But what I can tell you is that throughout the entire process of registering the company, I was addressed as a man. So Katja, the businessman. And again, I saw myself suddenly sitting there giggling a little bit and feeling like an imposter, feeling like I was in the wrong place. And this is a good example for imposter syndrome, not always being caused by our own insecurities, but sometimes also by things that are happening in our environment that are actually triggering this experience, right? And these imposter thoughts, they are dangerous. And that's also why I want to talk to all of you about them, because when we think things like, I am an imposter, we actually start feeling like imposters and we also start acting like imposters. And that's a problem because this can really sabotage our own success and be in between us and the accomplishments that we actually want to celebrate. So my biggest turning point and learning was really to reframe that mindset and stop thinking of myself as an imposter and start embracing the idea of me being an authentic leader. So what does that look like? Um, as the imposter version of myself, I would often be my own biggest critic. So I would tell myself really harsh things like, be silent in the meeting, you don't know anything about this topic, or hey, you're so lucky to be here, just be thankful for where you are. I also made a ton of unfair comparisons between myself and the people around me. Like, for example, everyone else went to Ivy League schools and I don't have that type of degree. I also found myself less talented and less professional than the other people. And often I didn't even notice that it was an unfair comparison because the people around me were just completely different from myself. And lastly, I would also sabotage my own success. So I would often play small, kind of minimize my own accomplishments by saying, hey, it was just the team or it wasn't a big deal. Um, and this way made my own accomplishments look smaller and therefore also make it more difficult for other people to value and see them. I also didn't always apply for the roles or promotions that I would actually deserve. So that's another form of sabotaging my own success or standing in my way. This is the imposter me, and now I want you to meet the authentic leader version of myself that I managed, managed to build up over the past decade. So as an authentic leader, I am first and foremost self-aware. I am aware of all the unique qualities and strengths to, uh, that I bring to the table. So basically everything that has pushed me forward my entire life, you know, the things that are just me, and really help me succeed with things in my life, I value them. But at the same time, I'm also aware of my weaknesses, my limitations, and my emotions. So everyone has these things, and that's okay. And we have to manage them. And we have to complement the areas where we're not so strong or where we struggle with other people. And that's totally okay. That's also leadership. 
as an authentic leader, I also have clarity about my career path and the paths of my businesses. So I know where I want to be, but also I'm really real about where I am today and which steps I have to take in between in order to get there. But I'm also critical towards my environment, right? I don't have to be everything to everyone, but really critically assess what is helping me progress? What is helping me push forward? And what are the things that are holding me back on, or don't serve me and my business? And as an authentic leader, I am confident. So I stand up for myself. I stand up for what I believe in. And I also don't shy away from taking the stage and sharing my honest opinions and making my voice heard. So this, all of this is leadership and leadership is an incredibly empowering concept. And that's also why I'm dedicating all of my entrepreneurial work with Wave Makers to democratizing access to leadership education. Because leadership education is typically something that only goes into the top of the organization. So very few people have access to it. And it's also a group of people that is usually not that diverse. But what we're doing at Wavemakers is really take it out of this small elite and bring it to everyone who wants to grow, especially early and mid-career professionals that want to empower themselves. So either transition into a higher level position, navigate a career change, or even start an own business. Like Those are the moments of growth. Those are the moments where you might experience imposter syndrome, but those are also the moments that have the potential to change not only your life, but also the lives of other people. Now I have three tips for you for overcoming imposter syndrome. And we also teach some of them in the Wavemakers Leadership Program. So what typically is happening in the program, I now selected a couple of tools that I think will be helpful for many of you as well. I took one from our insecurities module. I took one from the unconscious biases module and I took one from image and exposure. So let's talk about that. Tip number one is about insecurities and healthy self-doubt, which all of us have. It's completely normal, but it's important to turn that into a positive motivation. And what's very, very, very important is that you learn to recognize your so-called inner critic voice. So that means whenever you talk to yourself in a way that is negative, that is pulling yourself down, that is making you lose trust in yourself or lose hope in the dreams that you have. Those are the voices that you want to recognize and that you want to replace with different and more positive thoughts. So how to recognize the voice of your inner critic? There are a couple of, um, yeah, there are a couple of traits that you can, can help you recognize the inner critic voice in exactly those moments. Like, for example, the inner critic being very dismissive, harsh, rude, or mean. So it's usually when we talk to ourselves in a way that we would never talk to our friends or colleagues or other people that we respect. Whenever you find that kind of language, like, how can you be so stupid? It's the inner critic talking, and that's the kind of stuff that we don't want to hear. Another trait is the inner critic being extremely judgmental and binary. So this kind of black and white thinking. For example, look at his report, it's flawless and you are still here struggling, you are just incapable. So this is a very unfair judgment. But the inner critic also pretends to be the voice of reason. So it's telling you what will happen or what will not happen as if it would know the entire universe. Like, if you don't meet that deadline, you will get fired or you will never get that job. Whatever it is that you are telling yourself, this is the inner critic speaking. And the inner critic also tends to use cultural or societal norms. Like, everyone else is getting promoted. What is wrong with you? So it's kind of generalizing facts often far away from the truth, but might making you feel bad for who you are or where you are at the moment in your career. 
another inner critic criterion is that it questions your readiness. And this is what we hear a lot. So people constantly tell themselves, before I can do X, Y, Z, start a business or uh, have this leadership position, or I need another degree, I need to get certified, I need this, I need that. So these are all forms of not only procrastination, but also self-sabotage. And the inner critic discourages you. So examples like you are not good at maths, you are not good at technology, you're not good at nego negotiation, don't even try. These are the voices that the inner critic is using against you. And also statements about your appearance. We hear that a lot of, from a lot of women, especially with those extra kilos, with those wrinkles, with this, with that, you will never succeed. And again, here the inner critic is pretending to know the causal relationship between those facts, although they are not even true most of the times. So now that you know uh, the inner critic voices, pay some attention to it whenever those statements pop up and also try to reframe them. So reframing is this concept where you look at things from a different perspective. And I want you to start reframing your inner critic voice and not listen to any negative self-talk that might be feeding the imposter syndrome. Tip number two is about avoiding unfair comparisons between yourself and others, especially when you are in environments where you are different from the norm. So we see that a lot when people walk into interviews, when people walk into assessment centers or uh, pitching to investors, like whenever there is a challenge like that. And all, more often than not, the room is not that diverse. The room is more likely not exactly the kind of people that are similar to yourself. So this often leads to you feeling much smaller than you actually are. And what I want you to remember is that you may be different, but this different perspective that you have on, on the world is actually what puts you up, what sets you apart, right? And what can put you at an advantage. So I really want you to think about being different in a positive way. And the imposter syndrome only exists if you make an unfair comparison where we say, hey, others are not imposters. Others are legitimate because they seem confident, they seem certain, error-free, calm, normal, everything is great. But if I look at myself, I am an imposter because I doubt myself, I get anxious, I make mistakes, lose my temper, have weird thoughts, all of those things. And this is exactly what I mean with unfair comparison because we know ourselves from the inside with all our messy thoughts and all our insecurities, but we know other people only from the outside. And many people are wearing a mask of success, especially in the, in the professional space. So I want you to stay away from this unfair comparison. And remember, when you are in a room with nine other people, chances are there are at least six other people who also feel like imposters. You may just not see it. So the tip is about really remembering those differences and also looking at them from a different perspective. At Wavemakers, we also challenge a lot this professional norm or the leadership norm because there are certain stereotypes that tell us a leader is a man in a suit that is shouting at people. But no, that's not the case. There are many different ways of leading effectively. And we want you to start looking at yourself as a leader and also find your own way of making your voice heard. And that leads me to tip number three, which is about rewriting your story by building an authentic personal brand. And this one is super important because it kind of really crushes the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome only exists if we are hiding behind this facade. If everyone is wearing this mask of success where we pretend to be perfect, then chances are we feel like imposters. But if we actually put ourselves out there with authenticity, the chances decrease dramatically. And I have a couple of really beautiful examples here of probably some of the people that you look up to, like Lady Gaga, who admit that they feel like imposters sometimes. So she said, I still feel like a loser kid in high school sometimes. And I just have to pick myself up and tell myself that I'm a superstar every morning so that I can be for my fans what they want me to be. 
Or another famous example, Tom Hanks, who said, no matter what we've done at some point, it's always like, how did you even get here, right? When are the others going to find out that in fact, I'm a fraud and they will take everything away from me? Or Natalie Portman, who said that she feels very much when she, feel, when she actually entered Harvard Yard, because she's not only an actress, she also went to Harvard. And as a freshman, she would feel totally judged by that in terms of everyone else would be smarter. She would not be smart enough. And that every time she opened her mouth, she would just have to prove that she would not be just a dumb actress. And I think these are some of the vulnerable, honest statements that make us respect people, right? That make us look at them as leaders. And at the same time, it also, it reduces how everyone else is feeling like imposters. So I really want to encourage you to start crushing that imposter syndrome also with some first steps in building your own personal brand in an authentic way and using your voice. So to illustrate what I mean by that, imposter syndrome, as an imposter, you are constantly hiding, you try to fit in, you hope that others won't ever find out about your flaws, you're wearing this mask of success at work, and you're kind of tiptoeing around, people-pleasing, hoping that you won't be exposed as a fraud. But as an authentic leader with an authentic brand that you are using your voice and putting yourself out there, you make consciously that decision and you decide to be different. You decide to stand out with your personality, with your unique perspective, with where you come from. And this way, you really take charge of your own narrative because every person has a personal brand. The personal brand is kind of what others are saying when you are not in the room. So it exists anyways. And I really want you to take charge of that narrative and also embrace that vulnerability, right? Make it about yourself, make it real, paint a balanced picture of yourself and learn to communicate with confidence. So if this is something that is exciting for you, um, I totally recommend our personal branding kit. Um, I, have a, I have a QR code for you here if you want to scan it and it will include some great tips for you to take your first steps in building this authentic personal brand for yourself and kind of start your growth as a leader. So you can scan the code and you will also receive an email with it later. Um, but now I will move on and still tell you a little bit more about the background or the backbone of everything that I presented today, which is basically the Wavemakers method. So I already shared some topics with you around imposter syndrome, around personal branding, and all of them play together in a method that we developed that is called leading from the inside out. And what that means is that you basically anchor your professional growth around who you are as a person. So who you are and where you come from, this is what we are starting with. And then you are moving outward and you're building skills that help you actually carry that outward, create more influence in the world and also in your professional life. So in total, you are just six steps away of being an authentic leader and making waves. If you like, you can take a screenshot or picture of this because whatever your own personal leadership dreams might be about, you are just six steps away from them. And I will quickly walk you through them so you can also take advantage of this method for yourself. Number one is for you to find your own leadership power. And with that, I really mean those unique talents and strengths. Anything, think of your childhood, think of your early adult years, anything that was constantly pushing you forward when you're kind of in the flow, things that you're really good at, and really use that as a starting point. Because this is exactly what we often forget about in stressful, hectic, everyday lives but you really want to set a very, very important anchor here, your own leadership superpower. Then you also want to focus on turning self-doubt, which is completely normal and everyone has it, into positive motivation. Because self-doubt can actually push you forward if it's a healthy amount and if you find coping mechanisms like the ones that we discussed today, like silencing your inner critic, finding more empowering way to, to deal with the self-doubt. Like these are the things that will actually help you reach the steps that you envision for yourself. 
And then also invest your energy mindful. Whenever you have a clear direction, you will also spend your time and your energy on the things that truly matter. And make sure that this direction is not what society or your parents or anyone else wants for you, but that is really your own direction, the one that makes you feel happy and fulfilled. And then we move more towards the external environment. I want you to be critical because you don't have to be everything for everyone. You have to decide and choose your battles. So really critically assess your environment and see what is the right path forward for yourself. Then, of course, continue improving your communication because you always need other people in order to be successful, in order to achieve your goals. And last but not least, put yourself out there with authenticity. And this doesn't just go for extroverts. It goes for extroverts and introverts and everyone who has something to say, find your own way of using your voice and making a difference with your own perspective. So these are the six steps that I want all of you to prioritize in order to grow and achieve the next steps that you envision for yourself. Um, could be entrepreneurial steps, could also be inside of an organization. But always remember, you are just six steps away from making waves, as we call it at Wavemakers. And if it's something that you would like to do together with other people as part of a community, then let me share just a little bit also about our Wavemakers Leadership Program, because what we do there together as a group is help you find that clear direction for your career, build a powerful network of supporters, and also build the confidence and the courage to take some bold steps and make some bold changes. There are a couple of awesome people that already went through this process and also decided to share their stories with the world. Like for example, Victoria, she said the program was kind of a wake up call for her, that the only thing that was really holding her back was herself. And after realizing this, she started to look for job opportunities in a completely new field, applying without any experience in that space and even getting that job. Or we have Yash here, who wasn't even sure initially if he should join us, but then um, he managed to, because he didn't have the financial resources, but then he found out so much about himself, including what could actually get him paid for. And a lot of things, uh, a lot of changes actually happened in his life after the program. So he landed his dream job. He is now a program manager at Berlin Innovation Agency and a ton of other inspirational stuff. And then we also have Laura. Uh, Laura was based in Brazil, but the main reason why she joined the program was actually to build confidence and apply for a PhD in the States. And she wrote us this letter just after she received the acceptance letter. And these are also the kind of things that give me a lot of positive motivation to continue making waves together with the amazing Wavemakers team and creating you know, a positive change in uh, the in the lives of so many young professionals. We have one cohort of the Wavemakers Leadership Program that is coming up soon. Um, the, the program is fully online, so you can be basically anywhere in the world. It's four to six hours per week. So it's part time. You can do it on top of the job. You can also do it if you're on a break at the moment. And um, the best thing being, we have a cohort that is coming up on the 5th of July or kicking off on the 5th of July, which is next week, Wednesday. And we still have two open spots for that cohort at the moment. So if you want to secure one of them, you can just visit the Wavemakers website. Everyone who's attending this conference gets a 50% discount. So make sure to write down the code. It's FAMHACK2023 and become a wave maker yourself. So having said this, um, I wanna conclude with a make waves and move mountains. You see here our website, bottom left. You see the FEMHACK discount code in the bottom right. And uh, super happy to be speaking with you, not only now, also in the leadership program, and of course for the Q&A. So uh, back to Noelia and excited to answer any of the questions. 
Thank you very much, Katia. It has been a really fulfilling uh, conference for sure. Just as a reminder for the people who's listening, WaveMaker is one of our supporters in the, in the evangelist category. So for those people that will participate tomorrow on the hackathon event, uh, you will find a space dedicated for WaveMakers with all the information that Katia has, has just uh, shown us. So thank you for that. I'm sure that everyone that wants to keep in touch with WaveMakers uh, will do so and we will be able also to, to provide with some information to the participants of the hackathon tomorrow. So thank you Katia so much. So the public has done some questions that I would like to, to ask you if you are okay with that. So let's start. Do you think or feel that imposter syndrome is more present in women than in men? Unfortunately, yes. Um, and researchers are saying the same. So more women than men experience imposter syndrome. It doesn't mean that men are not experiencing it. Um, as I showed earlier, in total, 70% of the population uh, experience some sort of imposter syndrome. But uh, women specifically, and one of the main reasons for that is also the fact that often we are working in male-dominated work environments or structures that increase this feeling of being different or doing things differently than the norm. And this is also what we're, what we're trying to challenge a bit and what I encourage all of you to challenge yourself with as well and not, not be held back by it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks for, thanks for your answer, Katya. I have another one coming from the public as well. So given your work at WaveMakers, what do you believe are the most essential qualities for leaders in the tech industry and in general? Yes, that's a great question. And uh, most important is that great leaders can have many different traits, right? But one of the core factors that is actually helping us build trust with other people and inspire other people is authenticity. So that's why I would say that's one of the core things to really focus on, to find a way to use your voice in a way that is in line with your, with your perspective of the world, with your personality, all of that, because people want to work with other people. They are looking for this human connection and also for the trust. And that's why I think this is one of the one of the core factors. Another one is, of course, the communication. And there are many different people that say, oh, I'm a great communicator. I'm a great community communicator. I'm great at presentations and this and that. But from my perspective, uh, communication is not just that moment on the stage where you are presenting something. But more than anything, it is the interpersonal communication, which also includes listening. And this is why I would also add listening and interpersonal communications and also mastering really these, these challenging areas of communication, be it communicating the own needs, be it giving and receiving feedback, be it really mitigating conflict, right? Or in times of crisis and change, um, this is the second really important factor. And then, of course, for all of you that are working in tech, it's also about being able to um, create create a foundation in a time that is super fast paced and has like many different moving pieces to also, first of all, be OK with yourself, be confident and then also radiate that to others who will actually need that stability in order to work in a in a very uncertain and fast paced time. Great. Thanks for, thanks for your insight on that. Uh, I have another question. Uh, why do you think that you have been recognized as a finalist for the Digital Female Leader Award 2021 and the Tech Awards Gala 2022? What they mean to you? Oh, that's a beautiful question. Um, I believe that it's probably, it's a combination of, you know, working on something that is special and that is creating, creating an impact, but also being incredibly hardworking. So I've often in my life uh, received the feedback that I make things look, look very easy, <laughs> but um, it's really a lot of hard work that goes into all the initiatives that I work, work on and a ton of dedication and also years of work before it creates any results. 
And um, I always feel very special about the kind of prizes and awards because I feel that all this invisible, it's almost like an iceberg, right? Usually people just see the tip of it, but there is just so much underneath and it's an entire team and it's really blood, sweat and tears. And um, I always feel incredibly proud and seen when also this lower part of the iceberg is recognized. So I think it's a combination working on something special that is really creating an impact, but also at the same time, you know, all the invisible work that goes into it over years. And this is also something that I would like to share with everyone who's participating in the in the hackathon. Like these kind of things are often a marathon and not a sprint. So really continue pushing through, even if the results are not immediately, but really, you know, it takes sometimes not days and weeks, but it takes months and years and years and years. And um, I think this is one of the most fulfilling parts of being an entrepreneur as well, to sometimes have that recognized and seen by other people. Yeah, sure. So I, I can I can feel when you say that the something sometimes you only people only see the iceberg, right? Because there's a, a lot of work behind, and it's really hard to to I mean to. To, to show people and to kind of demonstrate that kind of work behind your team, everything, because maybe sometimes you, you as the CEO or the founder of your company, you are the, the, the image of the company somehow, right? But uh, as today here, we have a lot of people working be, behind screens, so people, a lot of people providing with support to, to, to this event, right? So I really, I really feel your words, uh, your words. So th thanks, for, thanks for that, 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 that nice answer. I have another question, Katia. Uh, how have your, your experience at large organizations like SAP and Phillips, Phillips influenced your approach to your own venture, to your own uh, startup? Mm -hmm. I think I have really learned a lot in those organizations um, because obviously there are always um, advantages and disadvantages of working in a startup and there are advantages and disadvantages also in large corporations. Um, from the large corporations, I really learned to create uh, processes that work and structures that work and also being able to, you know, build something sustainable. Um, from the startup space, I'm more learning to use limited resources, you know, doing something quickly and um, trying things out, changing quickly. So I think there are really different learnings, but they can be extremely complementary. And um, there's even a concept that is called paradoxical leadership that we are also applying at Wavemakers, uh, not only in our team, but also in, in the program, which basically means that every organization and also every person has some strengths per se. So maybe for me personally, it's I am extremely empathetic, but I am not always equally assertive. So I need to take that assertiveness space and train it as a muscle so I'll be successful with it. And the same also goes for the large organizations and small ones in large organizations. Many people really learn to build up these powerful structures and make things work uh, in the long go. And then we have to train this muscle of being, you know, fast and quickly and changing things. And in the startups, it's sometimes the other way around. So again, I think it's the complementary aspect of a paradoxical leadership that is probably the, the right balance. Great, great. Thanks. Thanks for your answer, Katia. And we will go through the last question coming from the public. They are asking if do you think that technical profiles has less ease of communication and how they can beat them, right? So I think that this person is referring to poorly technical profiles, right? Like people mm -hmm. who is really into development or something like that. Do you think that they have le less ease of communication or how can they sort it out? Um, I would not say that per se, because again, for me, communication, it does not mean standing on stage and, you know, delivering a presentation, but communication is really more, mostly about uh, people and different people have different realities and we have to make things work together. So it's a lot also about collaboration, about listening, about the human factor, building trust. And there, I would not say in general that uh, technical people are worse or better. 
Um, but there are certainly some job profiles that train more these soft skills because you constantly have to apply them in order to succeed. And there are other jobs that are happening a little bit more in isolation. And this is what we are seeing, for example, with some programmers indeed, that are typically working a little less connected than other professionals. But then, of course, when it is about promotions, when it's about developing yourself further or managing a project or even leading a team at some point, then suddenly all these other soft skills are kicking in and then there is something to upskill and to improve on. But in general, I would say, you know, different people um, can yeah, learn these kind of things. And there are just some roles that make it a little bit harder than others because you don't practice it that regularly. Great, great, Katia. Thank you very much. So I think that all questions from, from the public have be has been answered already. The only thing that I can say is thank you again for, participa for participating in the International FemHack. Thanks to people like you, we are, we are building this community. Uh, and well, the, the only thing that I, that, I, that I have to say is thank you. Thanks to WaveMakers as well for being supporters of the International FemHack. As I said before, uh, tomorrow during the Hackathon event, you will be also present there somehow. So the people who are listening to us right now, feel free to contact them and to, to ask for more information about, about their, their leadership programs. We will be more than happy as well to put, to put in contact uh, for, with, uh, with WebMakers people. So thank you very much, Katia. It has been a pleasure and I, I hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great evening. Um, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, so this is the end of the first day of the International Fem Hack. I hope you really enjoyed uh, our speakers of today. So tomorrow we have more. We have six different speakers coming up tomorrow. So we will be starting tomorrow at 9.30 Central European time. So on the same channel, the Nubes tweet, uh, Twitch channel. We will be starting with the kickoff of the day two. We will be presenting the challenges for the back end, front end, and data science challenges through the competition, the hackathon competition. So, if you are a participant on this hackathon competition, uh, you can connect to this live stream event tomorrow at 9:30 Central European time, and you will be also having access to the metaverse world that we have built for you. In the, in the Gather platform. As a reminder, there we will, you will find Nube staff that will be there to, ask, uh, to answer your question, potential questions that you may have on the different challenges. You will also have uh, people uh, coming from our sponsorships uh, companies such as Nether Electrics, I was Game, game Changers, thanks again uh, for your participation, and also people from WebMakers and from other supporters that we have on the FemHack. So do not hesitate to connect to this metaverse world. You have already received uh, email information about how to, how to connect to the metaverse world and so on. And we will be waiting for you for the conferences. Uh, thank you very much for being connected today. Thank you very much for being part of the International Fan Hack. And thank you very much for breaking the algorithm with us. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. When was the last time you broke the rules? When was the last time you fought for what you wanted? As girls, we've always been told what to do, how to behave, how to live. We've internalized that our lives are not our own. We've accepted a fate that was given to us by birth, ignoring our own feelings and beliefs. History has repeatedly blurred women's achievements. When did we forget that it was one of us who took humanity to the moon? This lack of feminine role models filters down into every little girl's mind. You are not worth it. You are not enough. But what if we are? What if we always have been? What if we no longer want to fit in? Now is the time to swim upstream. It is time to step up as women and to set up our future to gain power over our lives. Power will not be given to you. You must take it. Break the algorithm and join the International FemHack.